the Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook, talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them. When we look at teaching someone to drive, it, it seems like this big, overwhelming thing, almost from a student and an instructor point of view. And what we do is we break that down into sections. So is that kind of like the same thing? The way, So like on your first lesson, you might learn clutch control or you might learn how to move off and stop. And then your second lesson, you might look at left turn. I mean, I'm breaking that down, obviously, but it's that essential agilizing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's taking that bigger concept and yeah, we'll use the term overwhelm quite a lot, I think, with things like that. But like in big corporate world, we think about massive changes that we're going to impart either on a part of the business or a, or a customer base or things like that. And it feels huge. So what we have to do is actually break that down into smaller deliveries and smaller pieces of work, and then people can get their head around doing it. Now, if I get in a car and, so, and I think about the thing of I need to be able to understand how to complete manage this car be able to drive it be able to stop be able to be safe to know all the rules of the road that is huge but if I get into the car in my first lesson and I remember my first lesson was something along the lines of by the end of this lesson you will have started this car and brought it to a stop and that was just about fine for me and that was what we were going to cover and things like that and then that gets my head into a space of so if I can do that then maybe I can move on to the next bit so that incremental um, way of learning is very very agile um, in its way and I think that's also why it's more successful but I think it's also really useful to put bringing in that theory test again that learning the theory really helps with learning to drive because once you understand rules of the road a little bit more for me that helps me kind of get into that mindset of well now I know what to apply when I'm driving as well it feels like one less thing so like again learning to drive being a complete beginner one of the things that overwhelmed me was is but I don't know what to do when I get to to a junction I don't know what it means if there's a stop sign or I don't know I don't know what the differences are I don't know what double lines mean and things like that so breaking it down so on my on my wall as you know I have a wall of post-its under the learn to drive bit theory test is there as one take up lessons is another um research instructors and things like that and it's also that other thing of and i think that's why it's someone who wants to learn to drive might sit in deadlock for ages because it's such a huge process so like my advice in if you're that sat there going i want to learn to drive but i don't know where to start just break down the tasks and like similarly i really wanted to get into running last year and i really want to run a marathon one day now, where I'm at in my fitness level is like can't get to the end of the road and it just feels so huge. So actually, I took it back even further than that to just get myself started and out a door. I have a task for buy some new trainers, buy some kit, get an app that can help you and things like that. And it's almost like those smaller steps that help build you up towards the bigger steps that you need to take. And that's almost removing a problem as well because like you said then about running for example there's always an excuse so for example the excuse is oh, i've no running shoes so if you make that one of those steps you buy your running shoes all of a sudden you've removed an excuse yeah completely and it's also why apps like couch to 5k are amazing they're they're incredibly agile in that principle because um the first one that you do is a walk then the second one all you're going to do is run for 30 seconds and you're going to gradually build up so before you know it that you're running that 5k or you're running for 30 minutes the agile is everywhere terry and i'll i'll prove it throughout this conversation yeah and i would also suggest that if you are doing any form of agile breaking stuff down and whatnot you, you kind of stick to it because when i tried running last year i did the coach uh the the, the couch to 5k and i thought I'm not that unfit. I've been doing some yoga. I'm going to go straight into week two. Yeah, that's not the best idea. Mm -hmm. I went jogging on the, or running on the malls and I just came back muddy, sweaty, <laughs> unable to move or breathe or anything. So that wasn't the uh, that wasn't the smartest idea. So yeah, breaking it down in chunks. And I find it interesting as well that there's so much stuff when I speak to people from outside our industry that we, we bring into it and that we use without realising it. So like you said, Don, the lessons are on the theory or whatever, or even on this business, which we want to get more into. But one of the things that I speak about a lot on this show with the, the instructor industry is there's the hesitancy sometimes to ask for help or hesitancy to pay for help. So why do you think, not necessarily instructors, but why do you think people should 
use an agile coach rather than just because it let's be honest it sounds fairly simple i'll just break it down and do it so i'll throw that over to you why should we use someone like yourself yeah so it's a really it's a really fair shout and if there are other coaches listening to this they'll be rolling their eyes up probably because there's a lot of principles in coaching and sort of attacking overwhelm which doesn't make agile anything special but once you start one thing that I think would be good for people in terms of going a bit deeper into agile is it isn't just about frameworks it's not just about processes and things like that there's also actually agile principles and agile values that if you if you go by them they can also really help empower you a little bit and the one that is always um forefront of my mind is sort of people and interactions over processes so that kind of reaching out to people feeling empowered and inspired to sort of um, ask for help ask for support or letting people know that you're not comfortable that's really agile in terms of its mindset as well and that's kind of the difference around just coaching which will will sort of utilize the same sorts of principles and actually when we're thinking about coaching we're also sort of getting people to find their own solutions so that's really good as opposed to teaching so one of the things I've always said about what I regard you as an instructor is you are a coach not an instructor because you really do sit with people and help them get to solutions particularly with like um, blockages that they've got in terms of their mindset around their ability to be able to drive so you don't instruct people in my opinion you de- you definitely coach people and yeah so there's there's so much more behind agile other than this sort of framework there's like deeper principles that you can apply as well the instructor podcast with terry cook talking with leaders innovators experts and game changers about what drives them <laughs>